today I thought I would show you how I make my uh, disposable face plates. I call them disposable, but uh, I don't consider them disposable once I get them done. Uh, I usually plan for them to last for a year or two, or until I tear them up, but that's why they're disposable. Um, so basically I've just got a simple blank here. I haven't smoothed it or anything. It was just a scrap of lumber I had laying around. So I'm basically just going to chuck it up here. <laughs> lose all my tools first. Okay. Um, just going to chuck it in here good and tight. Um, now I tend to... I've got this locked in so this isn't turning here. Uh, I tend to take advantage of that a lot lately. Right, good and tight. Here we go. Now you'll probably notice a lot of noise because my tools are laying right underneath the stand here. Okay. Uh, I need to let it loose because I had it tightened up for what I was doing the last time. This is numerous ones I've done today. This is probably the last one I'm going to do today. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not in here yet. Yeah, kind of you can see it. I'm just taking my tail out and I'm going to put in, first off, uh, I've got a Jacob's Chuck here and I've got a Forstner bit in here the recommended size to drill for what I'm going to do. I'm using the Beal tool today to make uh, my disposable face plate. It's going to make the threads in here. And uh, These things are handy. I think when you're going to do a lot of repeat things, they're real handy um, because you can unscrew them, keep your project mounted up with uh, double stick tape, which is what I do. Okay, I'm just going to face this off a little bit because I like to work with it nice and smooth. And it just seems easier to me if I face it off a little first. Like I said, I didn't do anything to that. It was just rough lumber laying around. For all that it would matter, it could have been a piece of firewood, you know? It wasn't, but it could have been. And this looks for a nice big hunk of wood that will come down to the diameter I need for my project. For my, most of my little projects that I'm doing, Two or three inch face plate is good. These are lightweight. Uh, they're easy and quick to change out, even for my little old hands that aren't so strong anymore. Now what I did there is I just rounded it off because um, I'm going to round it off when I get to the next step too, but for right now I just rounded it off and because that's going to be up against my headstock when I'm turned it around. Okay, so we've got it faced off. I'm just going to get my uh, uh, tool rest out of the way here. Now I'm going to bring my forstner bit up to the center here. Lock it down. And get ready. Okay. And now I've got my lathe on a, a slow speed. This is not where I normally would run it for other projects. Uh, I'm going to say it's probably like 870 or something like that. Now I've got a mark on my forstner bit. It tells me how deep to go. So when I get to that mark, there we are. I know I'm deep enough. Generally, you want to drill these a little deeper than whatever your thread sticks out on your headstock to use it. And now I've got it drilled, so I'm going to go. Now the instructions, I believe, if I recall, seems like they say to do this after you tap it, but I like to do it before. I don't have to do much. I'm just taking a good sharp scraping tool and just making a slight little bevel or rounded area and there, just something to kind of break the edge off there. Okay, now we're going to stop that. Now I always try to stop this. I've got, this is the one that takes the two uh, pegs to turn it. So I like to stop it so that the peg that's going to be able to lock it is going to be even with my tool rest. And I do have my tool rest locked in there. Now I'm going to lock in my headstock. Okay, can't move. Now, I don't need that there at the moment, but a little bit later on I'm going to need that. Now I'm going to knock out my drill and change it for my simple uh, tail, or well, actually this would be a drive center uh, in most cases, but right now I'm going to put it in my tailstock. That just keeps the center spot. Now you can use any kind of wrench, but this is the one that I like just because it's kind of almost like a ratchet wrench, but not quite. I'm going to 
face it up there till it's going to lock onto my little uh, squares here. See, it's like a little square nut. I'm going to aim my threads. This is the beel tool. Let's see if you can see that. That's the beel tool. Okay, so I'm just going to put that up there so that it rests snugly into that center of that little area where the hole is, which is another reason I kind of like to chamfer that off. It just kind of helps a little bit line it up, I think. Okay, now I bring my tail stock up so that it's just snug. Get it centered in there. Yeah, come on. Okay, and I'm going to start turning. Now I'm going to follow it with my tail stock. I'm not driving it with the tail stock, I'm following it with the tail stock. The turning of the threads is actually cutting itself in and it's going to pull itself in. I'm going to follow it with my tail stock. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. Maybe you can see that better. Whoops, wrong way. I'm not sure if you can see. You probably can't tell what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm turning and it's cutting in and driving in. And then I bring my tail stock up to meet it. It just keeps it centered, keeps it driving straight. You want your threads good and straight, of course. worth getting this right because it's going to last you a long time unless you kind of are rough with your tools and dig into it or something. Accidents can happen and the thing is these are actually a little safer in some ways for some projects than steel I think because if my tool slips for some reason and I hit into that steel, ooh, that's a scary thing. If my tool slips and I hit into the wood, it's just like turning the rest of the project. You hardly even know how anything happened. I'm just turning to get it to cut in and then bring the tail stock up to match just to keep it centered. Okay, just about there. Okay, there's the bottom of it. It's bottomed out. Now I'm going to bring my tail stock away. Now here's where it comes in to play where I left that there. Because I'm going to have to unscrew this and I've got it in there good and snug it's going to tend to want to take my uh, chuck off. So by putting my peg in right here to hold it, it's going to hold my chuck from coming off. So I'm not unscrewing my chuck. And then all I have to do is unscrew it. Unscrew, unscrew, unscrew. It's the card is about full. I don't know. Either way. Okay, so now we've got that done. Now we need to take this out. Okay, we're taking it out. Because we've already done the chamfer. So here's what we've got. You see the threads down in there? It's not super smooth, but it doesn't need to be. This isn't a pretty show piece. This is a work piece. Okay, take my chuck off. So I finished got getting all my drill and taps done on my beel tool. Here. Set that aside. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna screw this directly onto my headstock here. 